Free polling opened yesterday here in Sweden for the European elections, uh, which would be held on June the 9th here in Sweden. They'll, they'll, they'll operate between the 6th and the 9th, various countries, different days. Uh, so by the time we wake up on the 10th of June, we should get an indication whether the punters are correct, whether the, the what, what, what uh, Ebony is saying over here is that the European Parliament will make a decisive shift towards the right, towards the centre right. If you listen to the BBC, it is towards the far right. Of course, they pick out some of the uh, populist nationalist parties around the place, uh, AFD in Germany um, and so forth, true Finns in Finland, and they say that's the way Europe's heading. In fact, it's not, of course. What, what, what we, is likely to happen is there's likely to be a decisive shift in the European Parliament where the centre-left, liberal, greenish, sort of wokey majority, which has prevailed there, I think, for pretty much as long as the European Parliaments exist, will go and there will be a narrow majority of basically centre-right, right-leaning parties. What does that mean? Well, it's a broad coalition. It's a broad church, of course, the right in Europe as it is in Australia. And here it's represented by different groups, different parties. I wanted to show you this. This is uh, Thomas Tobe. Thomas Tobe is the lead candidate for the moderate party. The moderate party is centre right. And uh, I'll do a little translation for you. Mindere Udslap means less emissions. Mir Kanakraft, excuse me if any Finns are listening, I've just buggered up your language. Uh, this means uh, less emissions, more nuclear. I'm on side with this guy already. For a free and safe Europe. Uh, the, the, the moderate party are a mixed bag. They, they're backing uh, a move to insert the right to an abortion in the Finnish, in the, sorry, in the Swedish constitution. I'm not sure that everybody on the right would go along with that. I, I certainly don't. But by and large, they're for an efficient government. They want the EU to be more efficient and more accountable. So all the things you'd expect of a broadly centre-right party, but this is what we're talking about, a shift to this kind of party. It, it's a very interesting phenomena here in Sweden. It's hard to pick, but everybody says there will be a, a gain for the centre-right parties and a, a loss for uh, the centre party. You can't see all of that there, but that's a centre party poster there. They've got two representatives in the European Parliament. The polling yesterday that I saw shows that they'll have zero. Uh, they're getting about 3.6% uh, of the vote. You need 4.7% of the vote to get a quota. 21 members to be elected here in Sweden. But you repeat this across Europe. Uh, it'll be different in different countries, but overall there is a shift. What does it mean, though? What does it mean to be right-wing in the European Parliament? Well, basically it means I think you just don't put up with all the nonsense that the EU and the EU bureaucrats spout the whole time. You just, you just do not. You, you, you question it. You want them to be more accountable. You're not prepared to let the EU bureaucrats run the show, uh, particularly on things like climate and energy policy. That's one of, obviously, of the touchstones. The other is national nationalism, really, national independence. Uh, it is strong in Sweden, not so much here. I'm standing in, what shall we call it? Paddington, I suppose. This is Stockholm's equivalent of Paddington. We're about three kilometres from the city centre, just round the corner from uh, a, a big uh, corporate headquarters. The kind of people you see here, in fact, I spoke to a few last night, tend to be the kind of people that when you, you the laptop class, if you like, that's Sweden's laptop class. So it's not a big centre here for the right. To get the right vote, you've got to go, judging from the last election, 2022, You've got to go to the north. You've got to get away from the cities and down to Malmo. Malmo is where most of the immigration is happening and there's a strong backlash against migration there and elsewhere in the country. Not so much here. I mean, people are very kind and generous towards all comers in Stockholm because not too many of them come here. But the, that's the message. So we're getting a very familiar pattern here. And I, 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 I know this is a very rough and ready account of Swedish politics, but the point is... It's a similar dynamic to what's happening in Australia. You've got the laptop class, the comfortable people in professional jobs, university educated, 
like the status quo, like the status quo over, over climate, want to move to do generous things towards the Aboriginal people through uh, recognition or whatever it is. And then in the rest of the country, you've got people that, that get their hands dirty, earning and living. They work in uh, largely in the private sector, often in manufacturing, which is still quite big here in Sweden. Uh, and uh, the, the people on retirement, the elderly, the, 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 the older part of the population, the over 55s, are, are going for those centre-right parties, the parties that believe in nationalism, national identity, uh, uh, regret the influx of migration, wish it would stop uh, on the level that it has been. It's a very similar dynamic. It's not hard to understand, and you can repeat that across almost every European country, as we'll be doing in coming weeks as I travel around Europe, really focusing on this big election. Because although the European Parliament is a sort of obscure body, it doesn't have a lot of legislative power, it is quite influential. And if the European Parliament makes a decisive shift away from that elite status quo position, if I can call it that, that's significant and we need to watch out for that in Australia.